Hey everybody and welcome back. For those of you that have been using AppGyver or SAP build apps recently, or maybe not so recently, I wanted to show a couple of things as now when you go to AppGyver.com, at least today, there's a 403 forbidden page. Basically, AppGyver moved a while back, went through a couple of different changes. Now, I'll put a link to this page here, but you can see how SAP build apps relates to SAP AppGyver. Now, a lot of my tutorials from CodelessFix.com and on my YouTube channel are still going to be mostly relevant. But a couple of things to note. Firstly, there's an article here with some overviews or an overview about a couple of different things like the builders group so you can connect with other people. But there is also a link here to access the community edition since it's not as easy to find as it was previously. Now, what we're going to go ahead and do in today's video, I'll put those links in the description along with a link to a playlist I have on different AppGyver tutorials, but I just want to walk through the new interface since there's a ton of changes more recently. So a quick high-level overview. Now, we do still have a free edition of AppGyver, so that is one thing to note here, and when I say AppGyver, just assume I'm talking about SAP Build Apps. So <clears throat> when you first log in and access your application, you'll see your application name up here. Now, previously, you could actually click it to rename, whereas now it's basically just this like static text. Now, we have our user interface. One thing that I've noticed is there's not as many close options. So for example, if we go to integrations or variables, up here, previously, you may have noticed, oh, there was an exit screen or exit option, whereas now we don't have that. So you wanna make sure that you're not accidentally hitting the uh, undo button. So main thing here is the user interface. So this is obviously your UI. This is a chat app that I built in a previous video. So basically you have your application here and all of the components over here, just like it was before. I don't see any new components that have been added, which is unfortunate. That's always a good upgrade to have, but you can also see that there is still the marketplace. You can still click here to install all of your updates. It is still very quick. You do still have the option to discard changes, and then you have your save option. You can exit the marketplace. So all of this, for the most part, is still pretty much the same. They're still by me and installed. There might be some different options or uh, different views for some of these elements, but most of the content appears to be the same. Now, we do still have the UI where you can select a given component and you can see the content, the number of lines, whether it's selectable, the length, the repeat width, the display, and advanced properties. So it doesn't look like any major changes here either. And then you'll see we do still have the style and layout like we did previously. And I'm going really quickly. This is not a high level overview because most of my AppGyver tutorials, again, are going to be more relevant. Now, you'll still find the variables section with the almost exact same, actually, I think it might be the same layout. Everything still looks identical here. Now with integrations, a couple of things to note. If you want to add an integration, you'll see that it's not available in the community edition. Now, if you're wanting to add a data entity, that's what's going to be your API integration. So you have a couple of different choices here, but I've typically preferred the REST API integration. What it looked like before is just like this. And I'll have a separate video where I'll walk through what it's like using the new options here. So that's pretty much everything that you would need from that point. Now, when it goes to app settings, you'll have the remaining options here, such as the navigation, which is a little bit different as far as the general appearance. And then you have your custom navigation. We have our authentication, where you can remove or add Firebase authentication. You have your theme, which looks pretty much identical. It just looks like the screen's a little bit smaller. And then you have help, where you can look through, which I think is going to be much better than it was previously. And I like that it's really easy to hide this build apps bar at the bottom. But that's the general overview. So again, we can click save here. You have the option to preview. You have the option to deploy. So if we were to select this, you could go through the process of creating a configuration, uploading any of your different assets, and then you can view your build history. So you'll see going through the target platform, you can go to Android, iOS, or web. So if we select Android, 
it's most of the same content from before. You just need to fill it out in a slightly different format. But that's pretty much everything that there is to the new system. It's a very, very new look. But for the most part, everything does still sit for the most part in the same place. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below and I'll see you all in the next video.